good afternoon and welcome to all so in the last class we have discussed about the bacterial cell wall uh, which are present in both gram positive as well as in the gram negative cell wall and we have discussed about the gram positive uh, peptidoglycan thecoic acids etc and mm. also the action of the antibiotics upon the bacterial cell wall so in this slide we are going to discuss what is the what will be the action of the stecoic acid upon uh, um, what will be the action of the stecoic acid which are present in a bacterial cell so in this slide um, they are mentioning about there are two theories in which which is based on the action of the stecoic acid within the uh, functioning of the bacterial cell one idea is that they provide they means thecoic acids may provide a channel of regularly oriented negative charges for threading positive charged substances so they uh, orient what thecoic acids orient negative charges for threading positively charged substances through the complicated peptidoglycan network one theory is suggesting that they provide negative charges then another theory suggests that the stecoic acid are in some way involved in regulation as well as in the assembly of muramic acid subunits which means muramic acids are nam and nag so in the regulation and assembly of this nam and nag subunits on the outside of this plasma membrane stecoic acids are involved so in this slide we are mentioning how the thecoic acid helps in the bacterial cell especially the gram positive bacterial cell how will be its action okay next we are going to discuss about action of lysozyme now what we we have discussed the action of the antibiotics upon bacterial cell wall in this slide we are going to discuss action of the lysozyme actually the peptidoglycan backbone that means glycan backbone of the peptidoglycan glycan means nam and nag these are the both sugars present this can be cleaved by an enzyme called lysozyme and this enzyme are present in animal serum tissues and secretions also in the phagocytic lysosome phagocytic lysosome is nothing but a cell organelle which has digestive enzyme lysozyme the function of this lysozyme is to lyse bacterial cells as and it acts as a constitutive defense against bacterial pathogen not only upon this bacteria it also have action on viruses and also on the burn out cells then some gram positive bacteria they show very much sensitive towards this enzyme so the enzyme is very uh, quite active even though it is at low concentration example in the lacrimal secretions that is tears which can be diluted into 1 is to 40000 even though it is diluted it can retain the ability to lyse certain bacterial cells so that much is its action upon the gram positive so what happens in the gram negative bacteria the gram negative bacteria is less vulnerable to the attack of lysozyme because it is shielded the peptidoglycan is shielded by outer membrane that in the gram negative it has a one layer of peptidoglycan but it is covered by an outer membrane it protect the gram negative bacteria from the attack of lysozyme and the exact site of this lysozymal cleavage is beta 14 bond which is in between n acetyl muramic acid and n acetyl glucosamine of the bacterial peptidoglycan so this is the exact site of this enzyme for the cleavage so uh, this is the another point coming under the thecoic acid sorry i have set the slide in the uh, after the continuation actually this slide comes under the continuation of uh, thecoic acid itself 
There are instances particularly in the structure cocci where decoic acids have been implicated in the adherence of the bacteria to the tissue surface. So this is the another role of the decoic acids in pathogenicity. This decoic acids in the gram negative gram positive bacteria, for example, streptococci. In streptococci, this decoic acid helps in the adherence means attachment of the bacteria onto the tissue surface. And this character it contributes a pathogenicity for the gram positive bacteria, for example, streptococci. So this all comes under the decoic acid. This slide. Actually, there will be a short answer question based on the decoy acids. So, you can include these points. Okay. And uh, in the last slide, I have shown lysozyme. That is quite different slide. And this slide is the continuation of decoy acid. There is some error in the arranging the slides. That, so, that this problem arised. Sorry. This slide comes under the continuation of decoy acid. Next, we can discuss about the mycoplasmas and other cell wall deficient bacteria. What about uh, the action of the mycoplasma and other cell wall deficient bacteria? What is What will be the action? What about the things we can discuss? Some bacteria lack a cell wall, but they are able to retain their ability to survive by living inside another host cell. So, this mycoplasmas are the bacteria which doesn't have any cell wall. So, you think that how it can overcome certain challenges, how it can protect itself from outside uh, increased osmotic pressure etc. So, this, this type of bacteria who lack cell wall, they, can, they are able to retain their ability they can ab they are able to survive living inside another host cell. So, they depend upon another host cell. For most bacterial cells, the cell wall is critical to cell survival. That I have discussed, cell wall, it is very important for the survival of a bacteria. But there are some bacteria that do not have cell wall. That is, example is mycoplasma species. And some can be intracellular pathogens. That means, the bacteria which are capable of living inside another host cell are called intracellular pathogens. And their life cycle is called either parasitic or saprophytic. Parasitic means depend upon the food for the other host. It depends upon the food for the other host. Saprophytic means which may feed for, on the dead and decaying organic matter. That is saprophytes. Now the, now the cell wall are unnecessary here for this type of bacteria. For example, mycoplasma which are intracellular pathogens because the cells only live in the controlled osmotic environment of other cells. Because they, they are living upon other cells. They are depending for their needs on the other cells. And they live in that cell in a controlled osmotic environment. So, there is no problem for this type of cells. There is no, uh, no problem of osmotic attack causing this type of cells. Means mycoplasma. Mycoplasma, they, they need no worry about the osmotic attack. Because they already live in a controlled osmotic environment of other cells. It is likely they had the ability to form a cell wall at some point in the past. By checking their past, some of them, some scientists say that uh, they had the ability to form a cell wall in their past living, but as their lifestyle became one of the existence inside other cells, when they started their life cycle as an intracellular pathogen, which depending upon the other host, they lost the ability to form cell wall. These are uh, evolutionary evidences that showing that they have um, once there was a cell wall, then um, later they lost the ability to produce or form the squads. Consistent with this very limited life cycle in other cells, 
and this microbes have a very small genomes because their life cycle depend upon the other host and also they have no need for the genes for all sort of biosynthetic enzymes so mainly their their life and feeding etc they depend upon the other host so they doesn't need much of genes for the synthesis of the enzymes because this biosynthetic enzymes are required for their survival etc if they are depending upon other cells so what is the need of the biosynthetic enzymes so they have no need of such genes as they can steal the component final components of this pathway from the host and also they steal and take all the final components of this pathway from the host in which they are surviving similarly they have no need for the genes encoding many different pathways for various carbon nitrogen and energy sources for this carbon nitrogen energy sources they doesn't require any genes because they are already stealing the host since their intracellular environment is completely predictable because of the absence of the cell wall and this example for this type of bacteria are mycoplasmas which is a spherical shape and are cutely killed if placed in an environment with a very high or low salt concentration so they can't withstand in the environment of very high or low salt concentration they can be quickly killed however mycoplasma do have initially have tough membrane that are more resistant to rupture but even though they doesn't lack any uh, they doesn't have cell wall but they have a tough membrane outer membrane that are more resistant to rupture than other bacteria and this cellular membrane has to be content with the host cell factors and for the this cellular this cell membrane for the uh, survival or existence of that cell membrane they depend upon the host factors the presence of what sterols sterols are present within the membrane of the mycoplasma which contributes to their durability by helping to increase the pores that hold the membrane together which increase their durability presence of sterols now we can discuss another bacteria species which are called l forms this l forms can be formed as a result of the mutation of normal bacteria or when the normal bacteria respond to the extreme nutritional conditions it may lack in their lifetime they may lost their cell wall and then then they are called l forms so either as a result of mutation or responding to the extreme nutritional condition it may result in the formation of the cells which lack cell wall they are called l forms and this phenomenon can be observed in both gram positive and gram negative species l forms have varied shapes because this there doesn't have any cell wall so the shape can be varied and are sensitive to osmotic shock because of the absence of cell wall so these are called l forms then mycoplasmas picture of the mycoplasma not mycoplasma l forms these are the l forms next is about cell walls of the archaea actually it is Uh, the archaeal cell walls are different from the bacterial cell walls in their chemical composition because of the lack of the peptidoglycan which part murine is absent in the archaeal cell walls but it is present in the bacteria absent in the archaeal cell wall that is the main difference between the uh, bacterial cell wall and archaeal 